All right, so this video is going to deal with the um, idea of the multiplication rule, and also known as the AND rule, versus the addition rule, also known as the OR rule. So what you're going to see here is that these concepts are not very hard. Students have a little more trouble with when to apply them in genetics. So we're going to talk through them real quick, and then I'm going to give you um, kind of just some tips on when to do it when we're talking about a real genetics problem. So the OR rule, which is the addition rule, what that means is we're going to add the probabilities. And the reason it's called the OR rule is because we say we want this to happen or this to happen, right? So we're going to talk in this video about rolling a dice, just because that's pretty much the simplest example you can have. So, what are the chances that we have a 3 or a 6 when we're rolling a dice? Did you hear me say the word or? So what we do is we take 1 sixth for the 3, and then uh, the 6 also has a 1 sixth chance. So our chance becomes 2 sixths or 1 third, right? Not hard stuff. Um, and. The reason students have trouble with it is they just don't know when to use the or or the and. So we're going to now apply the and rule. I'm going to say I want, let's see, I want um, not just to roll a dice, um, but to also flip a coin. I want to get heads and I want to get um, a six. Right, so if I want both of those things, I'm going to roll a dice and I'm going to flip a coin, and those two things are independent of each other, right? If we're talking about dependent probability, then you get into some ugly statistics formulas, and we're not going to worry about that right now. We're going to talk about two independent events, flipping a coin from my left hand, rolling a dice from my right hand. I want heads and a six. So the chance of getting heads, one half. And because I said the word and, I did not say I want heads or a six, right? I said I want and, heads and a six. The chance of me getting heads and a six are one half times one sixth, right? So what that's going to give me is, oh, um, that's going to give me one twelfth, right? So uh, there's only a one twelfth chance that both of those things are going to happen, right? Um, so the and and the or rule, not that hard. Uh, what's a little bit tougher is applying it in the real world. Um, so, and by the real world, I mean your genetics textbook. So um, that's how you know I've been a student too long. So, what happens here is s professors will all, will often give you a question on the test, and it doesn't use the word or or and. So you are looking through it, and you have two qualities, and you say, okay, I figured out, I did all the genetic stuff, I figured it all out. I don't know if I'm supposed to be doing um, the OR rule or the AND rule. So I found my probabilities of these two things, and um, I don't know whether I'm supposed to multiply their probabilities or add their probabilities to find the answer. Chances are your professor knows that's the pro one of the tougher parts of the problem, and so once you find the correct probabilities for each independent thing, the added probabilities and the multiplied probabilities are both going to be there um, as an answer. So. This is really important because this is the difference between getting that question right and getting that question wrong. What I will say is force yourself to say and or or. That's what I tell students when they come into tutoring. Oftentimes they have questions and they'll say, okay, it doesn't say or or and here. So how am I supposed to know which one to use? Well, what I tell them always is read this and take your two traits and say, do I want this or this or do I want this and this? Sometimes it can be a little ambiguous, but I promise if you force yourself to pick one, right, just be like, which of these makes more sense in this situation? Um, then you stick that word in there 99 times out of 100, you're going to get it right. Um, so the most basic example I can think of is we're going to say um, brown hair is a dominant allele, okay? So we've got mom and dad, um, big A, little A for both of them. Got big A, big A, big A, little A, big A, little A, little A, little A. Brown hair is a dominant allele. So um, we're going to go at this and we're going to say, okay, phenotypic ratio 3 to 1. Um, brown to, I would say, blonde. So when I do this, um, the chance in general that uh, there's a baby with brown hair from these two parents is 75% or 0.75. What if I said I want a brown-haired girl? Um, what I'm going to do, I didn't, I didn't say the word and or, or, right? So the question becomes, okay, um, I know the chance of having a girl is 
or 0.5, and I know the chance of having brown hair is 0.75. Do I add those two probabilities? Do I multiply those two probabilities? Well, think back to what I said earlier. I'm going to make you pick one. We've got brown hair or a girl, or brown hair and a girl. Think about what the problem's asking you. The problem asks you, what's the chance we have a brown haired girl? It's not including all the things with brown hair and all the girls, right? We're looking at the chance of having a girl that has brown hair. So we want a girl and brown hair, right? Can you see where, where I kind of drew that from? We want something that has brown hair and it has to be a girl, right? It's not brown hair or a girl because that's not what the problem's asking. The problem is asking brown hair and a girl, even though it didn't necessarily say that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take three over four times one half and I'm gonna get three over eight and that'll be my answer. That's the chance of having a brown haired girl. And you can do that for anything. Um, and you can apply the same thing with the addition rule. Um, if they have something and they want you to do this or this, even if they don't explicitly say or, make yourself pick one of the two if you're having trouble figuring it out. Say, okay, do they want this or this or this and this? And by the time you have done a couple of these and you're figuring out what they're looking for, if you force yourself to pick one, I would bet money that you'd be right. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in these videos will be true no matter what genetics class you are taking. However, the concepts in this video are referencing material from this specific textbook. Remember, if you are a currently enrolled Baylor student, we offer free tutoring on the first floor of Sid Rich. You may schedule a free 30-minute one-on-one tutoring session online or just drop in during normal business hours. For more information about our services, please visit our website www.baylor.edu. Thank you.